Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ernest Wilson, and I'm dean of the USC Annenberg School, and I welcome you to this very exciting event. I wish to thank President Sample, Provost Nikias, Wallace Annenberg, of course, the University Board of Trustees, our Annenberg Board of Counselors, alumni and valued friends for joining us today to mark an important event in the milestone in the life of this school. You honor us with your presence. Two and a half years ago when I became dean, I was privileged to join this great institution, one that was already at the cutting edge of all of the important things in our rapidly changing information society. Technology was converging, media business models were exploding. For some, confidence was eroding, but for others, this was the most exciting time to be in the media business. So this confronted those of us at the school with great challenges, but also great opportunities. A very serious challenge for us as a relatively large institution was how to be exceedingly nimble and to stay at ahead of the curve. We took to heart Alan Key's observation, which I know many of you in this audience know, that the best way to know the future is to help invent the future. And so that's what we are doing. I led a school-wide reimagining of all that we do, root and branch, here at the Annenberg School. The entire faculty, the students got together over a period of time to reimagine who we are, what we can do, and the great contributions that we can make to the information society. The result is what I, uh, we, we like to call at the school Annenberg 3.0. Annenberg 3.0. Uh, and at the heart of that plan that we developed is one simple sentence, and I will read it. USC Annenberg 3.0 is an innovative, full-service school in a networked university in the most global city in the United States. Now, let me just take a couple of seconds and explain what, what that means and the relevance for us uh, in, a, in this uh, exciting time. Um, in an environment where everything is converging, media, business models, etc., the problems that we face are problems of convergence. Happily, we are a converged school. The Annenberg School is a converged school. Starting in 1994, the merger of three separate and distinct academic units into one created a very exciting and rich panoply of expertise all under one roof. And I'm happy to say that we are one of the few schools in the United States of America that has a combination of all of these resources under one roof. And we're fortunate because we are also operating within a unified, networked university. And our faculty work very closely with people across the university, in the engineering school, the medical school, et cetera, uh, cinematic arts, to work together to uh, solve the problems of the information society. And of course, our location at the center of the media capital of the world provides special opportunities for our students and our faculty. But at the heart of all of this, must be journalism and communication for public principled purposes, including an equitable, diverse, and democratic society. Journalism education, a free press, is required for democracy. No free press, no democracy. That's one of the great uh, statements, I think, of our, of our modern life, and it's something to which we are deeply committed. In this context, we are frequently asked if not the Annenberg School, then who? And if not now, then when? And as you might imagine, our answer to that is Annenberg, of course. And of course, we're going to do it now and in the future. We are, ha we are lucky in this school to have two constituent schools inside. One is the communication school led by Larry Gross. Uh, people come from all across the world, from China and LA and New York and Washington to uh, seek answers to the great problems that face the transformation to a knowledge society. And we're also lucky because Geneva Overholzer, our director of the School of uh, Journalism, and her wonderful faculty are now taking the lead in digital media. 
in writing stories across platforms and developing new business models for private sector organizations that need to succeed in this very difficult time. This, of course, redounds to the great benefits of our students who have the best of all worlds within one building. We have accomplished a great deal in a short amount of time, but we know there is still much more to do. As we move forward, we will continue to draw on the invaluable guidance and wise counsel of Wallace Annenberg. She has been a great friend to the school, a tireless advocate of innovation, and she has become a dear friend to Francille and to myself. And so for that, I say thank you, Wallace. Thank you. So again, the, the, the final point I would like to, to reiterate is that we're moving forward with a vision that says we are an innovative, full-service school in a networked university in the most global city in America. I would now like to turn the program over to a great advocate for the integration of all forms of communication in a global society. Since 1991, Stephen B. Sample has led USC in its dramatic ascent into the top tier of the nation's elite research universities. Early on, he recognized Southern California's stature as the communications capital of the world and the importance of interdisciplinary teaching and research in creating new ideas and new technology. He found great support for these ideas with Amb Ambassador Walter Annenberg, Wallace, and her family. Their generous support and vision have helped make the Annenberg School the great school that it is today. We at the Annenberg School are delighted and grateful to have two such wonderful advocates, President Sample and Wallace Annenberg, and it now gives me great pleasure to introduce the 10th president of the University of Southern California, Dr. Stephen B. Sample. Thank you very much, Dean Wilson. That was great. I don't know if I deserve it, but, you know, heck. As the university president, I'll take it. I want to thank all of you for being here today. I'm grateful for your support of USC and your support for the USC Annenberg School. As Dean Wilson mentioned just a moment ago, it was Walter Annenberg's vision that placed the Annenberg School ahead of the curve in interdisciplinary education. Today's announcement is an affirmation of the school's interdisciplinary strengths and the impact that the fields of journalism, communication, and public relations have on politics, culture, and on society at large. Before I make the announcement, I'd like to introduce the chairman of our board of trustees, Mr. Ed Roski, Jr. Ed, would you please stand so that we might recognize you? <laughs> And I'd like the other members of our Board of Trustees who are here to, pl to please stand and we'll recognize you as a group. Ladies and gentlemen, our trustees. I'm personally very proud of the work that's done by the faculty, students, and alumni of the USC Annenberg School. They've been key contributors to Southern California's stature as the communication capital of the world. Wallace Annenberg and her family continue to be their greatest champions. Walter Annenberg, Wallace Annenberg, and their family were and are adamant in their belief that open and rapid communication is essential to a democratic society. We, of course, are seeing how the communication revolution is affecting everyone everywhere. New technologies have accelerated the flow of information expanded the number of people who can upload and download that information. Vast amounts of information and countless videos are a click away on the internet and on television. Yet we're often overwhelmed and as a consequence under-informed. That's why respectful and responsible journalism is ever more important. An informed citizenry depends on journalism that advances the public good, that adheres to professional values of truth, fairness, and a clear and comprehensive reporting of the facts. 
Cultivating sound values is integral to the mission of USC. These values are outlined in USC's role and mission statement. The statement requires USC's faculty, and I quote, to strive constantly for excellence in teaching knowledge and skills to our students, while at the same time helping them to acquire wisdom and insight, love of truth and beauty, moral discernment, understanding of self, and respect and appreciation for others. Walter Annenberg's mission statement for the Annenberg School likewise articulates sound values. It states that the right to free communication carries with it the responsibility to respect the dignity of others, and this must be recognized as irreversible. Educating students to communicate this message effectively and to be of service to all people is the enduring mission of this school. We at USC are determined to live up to those high standards. And we owe it to Wallace Annenberg and her family to fulfill their greatest aspiration for the Annenberg School. So Wallace and Ernie, would you please join me here at the podium? Wallace Annenberg is the longest serving voting member of USC's Board of Trustees. You notice I didn't say the oldest member of our board, the longest serving voting member. Take that home. <laughs> Through her leadership in the Annenberg Foundation, she has continued her family's tradition of generous and far-sighted philanthropy. In 2003, USC awarded her an honorary doctorate for her significant contributions to the vigor and well-being of this university and of the wider community. My wife, Catherine, and I count Wallace not just as a colleague, but also as a friend. It's my pleasure and privilege to work with her in making USC the best it can be. She brings a host of qualities to her leadership role. She's intellectually curious and insightful. She has a great sense of humor. She's passionate about education and about transforming people's lives for the better. Today, it's my privilege to announce a new name for the Annenberg School, a name that more clearly reflects its interdisciplinary expertise and that reaffirms the power of journalism to improve lives. The Annenberg School will now be called the USC Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism. Okay, now we're going to make it official. May I have a drum roll, please? Now, let's see, something else is supposed to happen here. And it ain't happening, but it will. Okay, it happened. I can't even read my notes. All right, so Wallace, on behalf of the entire USC community, I want to thank you. Your support and guidance have made this day possible. We're grateful for everything you do and everything your family has done and continues to do for our faculty, our students, and our alumni. Now, given that the band worked and the cannon worked, Wallace, would you like to say a few words? Thank you very much, Steve and Ernie, and thank every one of you for taking the time to be here today for this very important announcement. This is something Jeff Cowan and I talked about for many, many, many years, and it's beautiful to see it happen. Uh, it goes without saying that communication has the power to transform lives. And I know in the morning, if I don't have my three newspapers brought in with my morning coffee, I'm miserable. My children, who are adults, and my grandchildren, on the other hand, receive their messages through the internet. I mean, surely we all know that forms of communication are hardly static. But what's important 
is the skills embodied in journalism, which involve good writing, command of the English language, and most important, integrity, are there, whether it's the internet, the newspaper, or any other form that may happen in the future. So I am very, very proud that Dean Ernie and Dean Geneva are going to lead this effort. And journalism will no longer be the little stepchild. It's up there, right there with communication. And again, thank you very, very much. We have a couple special little gifts we'd like to give uh, following that uh, announcement. And to help us do that, I'm going to in, uh, invite to the stage Alvan Abdul Salehi, who is one of our uh, best uh, undergraduate students. He is a broadcast journalism major, and he's the guy who makes our daily uh, television programs work. And we had to get special dispensation so he could attend this event rather than being uh, at his, his day job. So uh, Alvin, if you would come up and, and uh, make the presentation and make a few remarks. Thank you very much. As Dean Wilson said, my name is Alvin Abdul Salahi. I'm a broadcast journalism student here. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to start off with saying there are about 2,000 students here at the Annenberg School, which means about 2,000 different and unique stories. And personally, I just feel very privileged and honored to be standing here uh, in front of you guys today to share my story. Now, the Annenberg School truly has special significance for me. About four years ago, I made a choice, I made a decision to change the path of my life. And it truly did. Now I'll tell you what happened. Having grown up in a culturally conservative Iranian household, I was always pushed toward the field of medicine when I was a kid. My dad would always come to me, hand me a stethoscope, and say, son, you want to be a neurosurgeon when you grow up, right? <laughs> I didn't know what a neurosurgeon was, so I said, sure, dad, whatever you say. So when I finally got to high school and I was about to graduate, I had a choice to make. Did I want to follow a path that was already predetermined for me? Or did I want to kind of take the, excuse me. Hello, mic check, one, two, three. <clears throat> I'll try to project, okay, thank you. <laughs> um, or did I want to take the, the easier route, or I mean, excuse me, the more difficult route and maybe do something that I really had a passion for? So what happened was, what I always like to say is, <clears throat> I had, even though I had a pre-arranged marriage with medicine, I chose to have an affair with journalism. <laughs> now, I'm not condoning <clears throat> promiscuity by any means. Please, that's not, what, that's not the message. But for me, this was, I believe, the right choice. Probably the only time that this will ever be a question. Now, my dad, once I told him that I want to do journalism, he sat me down and said, son, you basically have two options. You can go to a public university, study biology, with the intent of becoming a medical doctor. Or, if you go to the University of Southern California and study journalism, you're on your own. <clears throat> yeah, tough, right? Um, so, at the age of 17, I took out my first $45,000 loan and enrolled at the University of Southern California. So, right now, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> really, I should be clapping for everyone here because you guys have provi provided me with this valuable opportunity. So, standing here before you four years later, I can tell you honestly and without a doubt in my mind that it was one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. And I'll tell you why. Once I got here, I immersed myself immediately in all the, the abundance of valuable opportunities here available at Anberg. And really, the, the technology and all the resources that are available here to students really is unrivaled. There's, there is a reason that the Annenberg School is one of the best in the nation. It really is uh, a world-class institution. And just for example, at Annenberg TV News, we have technology that really is so even more advanced than some of the local news stations that are professional. And for me as a freshman, that was just remarkable. What a, what a fact that, that basically the world of broadcast and journalism is at my fingertips at such a young age. So having taken advantage of all these opportunities, I can tell you comfortably, without a doubt in my mind, that I am ready to take on the media world upon graduation. And there's one person that I really want to thank for this. And that, of course, is Ms. Annenberg. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
I really do want to, I really do, on behalf of all the students, want to thank you and your family for the continuing support and the dedication you've showed our school, because without you, none of this would be possible. So, on behalf of all the students here at the Annenberg School for Communication and now Journalism, I would like to present you with a very small token of our appreciation. <clears throat> what does this look like? A t-shirt, right? Now, it's not any normal t-shirt by any means. This is a one-of-a-kind t-shirt, at least for now, and the first of its kind bearing the new name of our new school. The Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism. So Ms. Annenberg, if you can please come up here, or I will come down to you, of course, because, because it would be my privilege. And I would just like to, I would like to give this to you, and once again, thank you so much. It really is my privilege to be standing up here in front of all of you. Thank you for letting me fulfill my passion. I'm going to invite all of you now to, uh, I want to thank all of you, first of all, for joining us on this uh, joyous occasion. Uh, this is the kind of student that we, this is what makes it worth coming to work every day, because we have students uh, like this. Uh, I'm also going to present um, uh, Wallace with a reproduction of the uh, announcement that will appear in your local newspapers. The LA Times and the New York Times will have a half-page ad that will say this. So we're going to present that to, uh, to Wallace. I want to thank Dr. Sample and the rest of our community. Thank you so much for coming, and have a great day. Thank you. Hold on, hold on, just one, just one minute. I'm told that the original version of that, that plaque and T-shirt said, and journalism, damn it. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. If I could have your attention just one more time, very briefly. On behalf of the Annenberg School, and I'm going to say this carefully, on behalf of the Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism, I couldn't be more pleased that you have come to join this luncheon celebration. I'd like to take a moment to recognize our special guests this afternoon, uh, President Sample, if you just maybe wave, just wave or rise, uh, there's President Sample. Uh, Wallace Annenberg, of course, who is at table 10. Provost Max Nikias, who is here to my left. Ed Roski, chair of the USC's Board of Trustees, there's Ed. And all of the USC trustees, if you would please just stand and be recognized. I would like to take this moment also to recognize uh, uh, the contribution that John Cook has made. He is our outgoing chair of the Board of Counselors of the Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism. So if John would please stand. He's done great work. Also here, we're delighted that the incoming chair and vice chair of the Board of Counselors, that's Jarl Mohn and Ron Rogers, are also with us this afternoon. So if they would stand, please. I also want to uh, invite any other members of the Board of Counselors uh, who are here 
to also stand and be recognized. I'm not sure. There's well, good. Bruce is here, but Bruce, Bruce does multiple duty on multiple boards. Good to see you, Bruce. Um, I would also like to recognize uh, two of my predecessors. Uh, there are two former deans here, Peter Clark and Jeffrey Cowan, and I invite them to stand and be recognized. Geneva Overholzer and Larry Gross are the school directors, and if they would also stand. And then finally, I would like to ask really the most important people here, the faculty of this great school, to stand and be recognized. So if everyone on the faculty would stand. Thank you. Rather than going on, I, I have wonderful remarks, which go on for about 90 minutes, but I'll spare you that. Um, but I will say that following lunch is a brief program where you will hear from our school directors and two of our outstanding students. You've already heard from one of our outstanding students, uh, an undergraduate. Uh, after lunch, you'll have the opportunity to hear about the very interesting work that's being done by, by our graduate students. So. Bon appétit, enjoy your lunch. Thank you, it's really a pleasure to be here at this event. I feel a little bit like the sibling on the side. I don't know whether I'm the older sibling, the younger, I think I'm the older sibling in this case. Uh, about six years or so ago, when Jeff Cowan was working his unparalleled recruitment skills and persuading me to leave the Annenberg School at the University of Pennsylvania and join the Annenberg School here, there were really three things that struck me as particularly attractive and exciting about the school. I mean, there were many things I liked. There were friends and colleagues on the faculty whom I'd known for years and liked. But there were three things I as I recall, that particularly uh, made an impression on me. One was the fact that the Annenberg School recognized the centrality of entertainment in the modern world and the inescapable role of entertainment in influencing, dominating, relating to all other aspects of communication. The Lear Center, but in general, the faculty and the students were very much aware of it. They were taking advantage of the natural resource that Los Angeles provides. A second thing that struck me about the school was that I think the Annenberg School at that point, and even today I would say, was ahead of the curve in terms of the international dimension of communication, the global dimension of communication, and the in, sort of inextricable connection between that and technology, the way in which new communication technologies were making globalization real in a way that had previously had been rhetoric. I mean, this was now inescapable and again was transforming the economy, was in transforming all aspects of our lives. The third thing was the fact that there was a school of journalism there, that it made it possible for scholars of communication, for students of communication, to have an up close and deep relationship with understanding of this really important central institution that was so critical to the functioning of democracy. And as someone who had been in a small graduate program, which had no journalism really other than a faculty member or two interested in it, this was, it seemed to me, a great advantage. The fact that these two schools sat side by side, uh, in fact, not only sat side by side, but were intermingled. If you went down the hallways, you'd have a journalism faculty member, a communication faculty member, and so forth, allowed for a kind of collaboration, cross-fertilization, and intellectual stimulation that I was really looking forward to, and I have found that that promise has been, uh, I think, paid off. It has been fulfilled, and particularly it's been fulfilled in the sense that we are working together. We have been, for several years, I enjoyed enormously working with Michael Parks, and I'm enjoying enormously working with Geneva Overholzer as partners and collaborators in trying to do something new and different to integrate the understanding of journalism with the teaching and study of communication in a way that really doesn't happen anywhere else and that is critically important at a time 
when journalism is being transformed by many of the same forces that I was referring to earlier. This is a time of enormous importance to our society, to the world, and journalism's fate is something that we all depend on. So I have found that an enormously gratifying part of my time here, and I think it's really terrific that we are recognizing this partnership in the name of the school. One of the things, in addition, this is, I have to say to be fair, not really different from Penn. The students at Penn are outstanding, and the students here are outstanding. One of the great joys of being a teacher, which is really how I think of myself and what I've been doing for over 40 years, is being a teacher, working with students, and watching students, or work, how, how shall I put it, having students satisfy my curiosity. The great secret of the academic life, for those of you who haven't had that pleasure, is that you can have things you're interested in, questions you would love to know more about, and you get a student to take it up. And then they go out and do all the hard work and come back and give you the answers. It's really wonderful. I've enjoyed that probably more than anything else I've done in these 40 years. I've supervised over 50 doctoral dissertations and worked with many more students in other ways. And I've learned so much that way by having them do all the hard work. And it's great. And what we're going to do now, and unfortunately this is, how shall I put it, only a small sample, but I assure you it's a random sample. We're going to give you the opportunity to hear from one of our students. Now, you suspect that we've chosen this student because she's unusual. No, we've chosen this student because she's typical. But she's typical in all the ways that we're so proud of at the Annenberg School. And I'd like to introduce Charlotte Lepsensky. Thank you, Larry. It's really an honor to be here today and get to speak to um, a crowd of people who've enabled four years of really exciting work and to, tell, to share with you why Annenberg has been so special to me. Um, when I applied to Annenberg, I was wrapping up a few years of work and, and living in India where I had been working with locally based non-government organizations. And I had worked with them on communication programs related to development issues such as gender equality, public health, and civic engagement. But both in India and also in my previous work with nonprofits in the US, I came to see just how critical solid research is in building communication strategies for making real social change. Um, and I also unfortunately came to see how painfully apparent it is that few of these organizations have these skills and few of them have those capacities. So I came here to Annenberg to gain that expertise that would help me better support organizations in designing research-based communication strategies for social change. And Annenberg has turned out to be absolutely, bar none, the perfect place to do this. And it's allowed me to do it both internationally and locally, which was my goal. Um, with help from Annenberg, I've been able to continue to work with organizations in India, both the ones I had already known, as well as new collaborations facilitated by Annenberg faculty, some of whom who are here, um, such as collaborations with the BBC World Service Trust. And I've also been able to start new work in South Africa where my, me and a fellow colleague in the PhD program have been helping an NGO there incorporate video and communication strategies more centrally into their HIV prevention work in South Africa and in Botswana. Um, and thanks to the training here, I really feel like now I'm able to kind of bring more to the table when I work with those organizations and really help them make more of an impact. But in addition to the international opportunities, there have also been a lot of opportunities to put communication to work in the service of the local communities right here in our backyard. So I've worked with the Metamorphosis Research Team on projects that engage local media and neighborhood residents in addressing urban issues here in South LA. And I've also worked with Mobile Voices Research Project, where we have been partnering with organizations in Los Angeles to put internet-enabled camera phones in the hands of immigrant workers. And the workers are now using these phones to document labor and rights violations and to post their stories to the internet. So it's giving this community, which has so often been silenced, it's, it's helping them find their online voice. So these projects have provided me with an outstanding training in action-oriented research that I don't think I could have gotten at any other institution. And it's been able, enabling me to think about how to put those tools to work to promote social change here in LA and also um, internationally. So, and I'm also really excited now to see the ways in which all of these, these different strands of my work are coming together. 
the hyper-local projects are starting to kind of merge with the international research. So when I return to India in a few months for my dissertation research, I will be focusing on building partnerships with local groups in India who can take the mobile voices cell phone tools and adapt them for that, to adapt them in that cultural context. So it's sort of taking this project from um, immigrant worker communities in South LA and then taking it over to marginalized communities in urban India. It's really exciting synergies happening. Um, so I'd like to just close by sharing why I'm so passionate about communications and the work that I've been able to do with support from Annenberg faculty. I've, for a long time, as long as I can remember, really been committed to building better communities. And I strongly believe that communication is the center of that process and it's the heart of social change. And I think at Annenberg, I found a place that shares this sensibility. So I just feel really fortunate that I get to be at a school that is not only committed to excellence in research, but also strives to make that research relevant to addressing pressing human needs. And I'm really grateful for the opportunity to work with outstanding mentors, again, many of them sitting at that table, um, who have encouraged me to mix research with on the ground action. And I'd like to thank them all, though I cannot name all of the uh, wonderful faculty who've been of help in my work, but um, I would like to thank them in spirit, and I'd also like to thank everyone who is here in this room who have made it possible for those faculty to be here and for me to be here and for them to impact my work. Thank you very much. Please welcome the director of the School of Journalism, Geneva Oberholzer. Thank you so much. What a wonderful and exciting day. I want to thank Steve and Max and the trustees and the counselors and Kay Heitzman and all of the wonderful folks at Annenberg who have made this such a special day. I just have had a smile on my face that has been practically aching. And of course, most of all, I want to thank Wallace for making this happen. We have grown accustomed to daily reminders that journalism is in a period of great unsettlement. But what we recognize here in this special day is by adding journalism to the Annenberg School's name, we understand that it is also and primarily in a period of enormous promise. We've asserted here together, I would argue, that journalism is a subject worthy of the attention of a great university. And surely it is, particularly at this moment, for even as its traditional models collapse, journalism is being reinvented. It is being reborn in new and exciting ways every day. And with this name change, we make clear that the vital role that Annenberg has played and will play in that reinvention is affirmed. First of all, we are in a rich collaboration with my big brother here, Larry Gross, and our colleagues in communication. And we are very grateful for that because indeed it enables us to do the kind of research and deep reporting that will enrich the debate that will contribute to shaping tomorrow's journalism. Research about the new roles of the public and about new economic models, about the policies of government, about the innovations occurring around the world, emerging models of community and national and international information, and uh, the potential for new ways to support information in the public interest. Second, in our own journalism school version of R&D, researching and doing, we are increasingly serving the information needs of our communities as legacy media's resources are shrinking. In our news outlets, Annenberg Television News, Annenberg Radio News, Neon Tommy, the voice of Annenberg Digital News, Impact, our documentary program, also Intersections, the South Los Angeles Report, and now a new investigative reporting community-supported organization called Spot Us that we are rolling out. In all of these, our students and faculty are putting into practice the journalistic excellence that we teach. And finally, of course, teaching is the heart of our promise of contribution to journalism's future. In our classrooms and learning laboratories and in the fine work of our centers on health reporting and arts reporting and digital news, we are ensuring that the enduring values of journalism will find their way wherever the public attention goes, from old media to new, into the new world of tweets and Facebook and their successors yet unborn, through multi-platform storytelling, 
with a spirit of invention and entrepreneurialism that will enable Annenberg graduates to succeed and to lead in this arena so essential to democracy and to a life productively lived. So thank you for giving me this moment to share so exuberantly. And now let me introduce Kim Daniels, a second year student in our MA in journalism program, a broadcast student, and a fine example of that Annenberg leadership that I just mentioned. Kim. Thank you, Geneva. So um, I'm, I'm humbled at the amount of talent and experience in this room and leave it to Annenberg to assemble a group like this and make a baby journalist like me get up and say hi. <laughs> but a room like this is one of the reasons I chose to attend the graduate program here at Annenberg. Actually, I first heard about Annenberg in high school and at that time it seemed like a dream. But getting here wasn't a straight path for me. Um, after undergrad, I lived in Japan as a JET program participant. And when I came home three years later, I started working in reality television uh, on shows like Dirty Jobs and The Bachelor. And for the most part, I worked in the camera department. And the technical training in photography and lighting strengthened my production skills. But that line of work motivated me in another way. Constantly filming one guy making out with 25 different women <laughs> made me think I'd like to work in a career where I actually cared about the content. Um, so in considering careers, uh, the best advice I was given was to go with my passion, and journalism is it. I chose Annenberg for a few different reasons. One being, of course, it's a top-rated school. But um, I knew I wanted to go into long-form documentary, and I looked at Dan... Berman's program, Impact, which is our news magazine program. And so before I even applied, I knew that I wanted to work with him, and now I am, I'm the supervising producer. Uh, I also knew I wanted to be able to explore radio production and online journalism, uh, be involved in the community, and I wanted to study abroad. It turns out Annenberg's the perfect place for all of this because I got to join Annenberg Radio News as a reporter. I got involved with Neon Tommy, which only started last year, so it's been really exciting to see the evolution of our digital newsroom. Uh, I helped to teach journalism at Crenshaw High School through the South LA Reporting Project, and last summer I went to Cape Town with Professor Ernest Smith and interned at SABC Parliament where I met President Jacob Zuma, and I interviewed all of South Africa's uh, top politicians, which was amazing. Um, and I do want to mention, uh, my classmate and I were the, the first Americans, I believe, to be interning at SABC Parliament. And um, don't worry, they loved us. <laughs> and they're really looking forward to hosting more Annenberg students in the future. It was, it was really, it was, it was amazing. So, but the other element of a graduate school experience that I wanted and what made Annenberg so appealing was to be surrounded by mentors, top professionals in the field. And I'm not grade grubbing here when I say that's exactly what I've got. I'm awed to be surrounded by a faculty with the range of talent and successes that the people at Annenberg can boast. I came here for the space to dedicate my time and energy to learning the craft of journalism and to find compelling stories and figure out how to communicate them to a wider audience. And at Annenberg, I found not only the proper training, but the support and interest to grow my own talent as a reporter. At this point, I've got a little less than a year left, so I'm making use of every minute. But like you, my attachment to this school will last a lifetime. And in closing, I just want to say that I know everyone here has a hand in making this school the place it is. And for that, I want to say thank you. But rest assured, there's a good crop of young journalists that are thriving because of your support. So thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I think you now understand why we're all here, uh, why we all work hard, why we write those articles, why we attend those conferences, why we go to those classes. It's because of these fabulous students that you've had the opportunity 
to see today, to share their enthusiasm, to see their passion, to see their commitment to excellence, and the ways in which they love not only the Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism, but their deep, deep commitment to the principles and values of the University of Southern California. So for that, we are all grateful, and I'm certainly grateful on behalf of my colleagues that all of you have come out today, and we look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you very much. <laughs>